The M Resort is the new home of the world's most anticipated poker event, as Las Vegas welcomes the game's greatest for season four Premier League poker. Party Poker Premier League Poker is back, coming to you from the M Resort in Las Vegas with its best lineup yet, all chasing a one and a half million dollar prize pool and the ultimate title in poker. It's important for me to come out and win and to prove to the world that I'm for real and I am one of the greatest tournament players out there. This is my first opportunity to play in the Premier League, so obviously I want to start off with a bang and just win it right off the bat. For me, you can expect anything, so just watch and anything is possible. Do I think I have a shot? I mean, I'm putting up 100 grand, so that should tell you something. I just want to add another championship to my name. I want another crown. Number four, I'd love to make it. Premier League four. I'm going to bring everything I got to the Premier League. It's going to be tough to beat me. But when you play poker, it's not like there's something you're going to do today. You have done your homework, you know how to play, then you get there and you fight. We're at the starting line. <laughs> Let's bring it on. You know, it feels great. I want to show the whole world how much of an edge I've got. Even the top professionals, I know I'm loads better than them, and I'm here to prove it. There's 12 great players in this field, $1.5 million in prize money. It's the Premier League Four, baby! Deal me in! But that is what I'm talking about. I am the worst! Bam! I wouldn't underestimate him in an eight-handed game, because this is the size of field when he used to win. We're gonna fucking dance. Oh. No idea what in the world's going on here. Yeah! Oh, I hate poker so much! Oh my lord, this is so sick. Having fun. Is that what you call having fun? Well, I'm gonna punish you. Okay. I promise. Cool. I don't, you don't think it's a personal level. I mean, it's just poker. It means every other time we play, it's gonna be a hell of a show. And you know what? I'm gonna expect to be wrong sometimes, you know? Yeah, no kidding. Oh! Get some of that! Can we get security? I'm, I'm just so happy with the way I'm playing. We're happy with the way you're playing too, Phil. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> oh. Oh! It must be good. It's good. It's fucking good, and that's what I'm talking about. I waited, I trapped him, I checked behind, I free bet, I did everything right, and if it's a jack or a ten, someone's fucking game broken. I'm steaming. Oh, wine, please. No! You don't even deserve to ride the truck. The worst. An embarrassing thing. Then the monkey at the back! Whoa! Wait, wait, hold on a second. Best wishes on your retirement. It's the gayest shit I've ever seen. <laughs> All the best players know when to <laughs> quit at the top. You're seven, <laughs> years, seven years too late. <laughs> oh, sick. What's it like to ever hit a flop? Like, ever? Sick. Well, this deal is just incredible. I mean, this is just a, you know, unbelievable. I haven't won one hand. <laughs> <laughs> yeah! Shouldn't even be allowed to play. You're beyond well, dumb. I guess maybe one of us is dumb, Tony. I'm not so sure who it is, so. Fuck it. At least. You put your money where your mouth was. In your eye, David Benjamin, you, Benjamin, you arrogant me. guy. Fucking think you can angle me. You just got so pwned, it's a joke. I'm ready, ready to die. You're not ready to die. You've declared war. I've accepted your terms. Did you just shut up. Yes. That's kind of weird. Yeah, baby, that's it. Let Helmuth hit one. Yeah. Turn an ace to end this race, yo. Yeah. 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 Every tournament should be like this. This is the best shot in poker. Oh, I, I can't fucking wait, I'll tell you right now. Before the main event gets underway, it's the chance of a lifetime for 16 online qualifiers to win a seat in the Premier League and a chance to play their poker heroes. We've two groups in action and half the field is here at our TV feature table. And in the poker room at the M, the remaining eight will play out their league match, accumulating points to reach the final table where they'll battle it out for a place in the Premier League. Plus, six party poker pros battle it out for a spot in the main event, including Poker Hall of Famer Mike Sexton, previous Premier League finalist Ian Fraser, and the leader of the European rankings, Dragon Gallic. So while things get underway here in the poker room, Isaac Haxton and Jesse May are your hosts on the feature table. What an opportunity for 
the 16 qualifiers, one of whom will be sitting down with their heroes. And will it come from group one? See the countries represented, Sweden, Italy, Canada, England, and Germany. It'll be 16 points for a win, 11 for second, eight for third, down to zero, with only the top two in the league standings guaranteed to make the final table. And it is a nice balance, Isaac, of nationalities here. Uh, Canadians, Germans, Italians, Swedes, all of whom qualified online. Three votes. I mean, there's going to be some decisions you have to make about whether or not you want to take on a race, isn't there? Yeah, and for the most part, I would not be avoiding those situations in this sort of tournament. Race to 5,000 total. First raise from Gary Bigger who hails from Canada, raised to 5,000. And uh, of all the players, there's an indication he might have the most live experience. I know that he's made a, got a 10th place in a World Series of Poker event in 2008, 1,500 no limit, and those are tough. Yeah, those are big field events. It takes some doing to finish 10th in one of those. Kirchie. Sitting just behind Gary Biggers, called with the ace queen. Um, oh, now eight handed. Uh, is three players. Is is the ace queen? Is this? Do you, do you like this call off a hundred thousand in chips? Yeah. Everybody in this pot's got a pretty strong hand. There's a raise and a couple calls, and king queen's not in very good shape here. But can't Super blame any of these guys for seeing a flop. Super dominated. <laughs> a little something for every one. Uh, Top yeah. pair for Six. two and uh, likely to be three way to the turn here. I don't see anybody getting away from this cheap. Bigger's Let's checked here with the king high flesh draw and it checking to keep the pot small and call. Is that way you see it? Yeah, probably so. I don't see him looking to get away from this hand on this board. So it's really a decision between check and call or bet and hope to bluff out some smaller pairs and things like that. Anderberg's in the tank. And is folding a oh. good option here? I Sweet mean, one wow, he's, he's managed to pass. That's impressive. Big lay down. Cool. Good players. You get the feeling that if, if Bigger had the ace of diamonds, he might be willing to, to push a little bit more in this flop. Is that what he's scared about? Someone yeah, it, it would be real bad news for him to get in against ace queen with the ace of diamonds yes. or a nut flush or there are all sorts of hands he can be in gigantic trouble against check seven check check on the turn a king or a diamond is what bigger needed and he hasn't gotten it uh, check six are you going for a value bet on the river here Pierre Shikurchi? It's bound to think he has the best hand. Any better hand would be likely to bet the turn. 16,000. Under half the pot. Almost tempting. And a fold. And first pot for Talal Shikerchi. And that'll make him feel good. That no sweet one. Actually, we could have had a couple all-ins there if things had gone different. Yeah, you put a couple different players in those seats and deal them the same cards, and there could have been a lot more action there. are playing for a lot of money. See seven folds. Eight folds. One fold. Race seat two to five thousand. Absolutely massive, yeah. Cool. Seat three. Seat four folds. Seat five folds. Four, six, six. Three players. Check 
check of it. Check. C6. C6. C2, but it's 11,000. Fold and fold. Relatively. Right, nice. C5. Certainly could have been the best hand, but this early on, you can give the guys some credit. It's an awesome 10, already signed in for the Premier League. Back to defend his title, reigning champion, J.C. Tran. To be able to come back and defend your title in, in any event, it's, uh, it's a great feeling. It's a very prestigious event, big buy-in, big prize pool. And, you know, I'm ready to win this, and I really want to win this, and I need to win this. It's the trash-talking, high-stakes, British bad boy of poker, Luke Fullflush Schwartz. I, I definitely think I'm one of the strong favorites. I think you should put your money on me. I think, uh... Yeah, I think it's all about me. Game theorist graduate and the leading lady in poker at the moment, the Lady Maverick, Vanessa Russo. I mean, I always go for the win. Um, to me, just to make the money is, there's no point in that. Um, I like the feeling, especially in a tough field like this, to come out on top. Um, that's really what it's all about. He's added a WSOP bracelet since last season, now a triple crown winner, Roland DeWolf. Winning it at my fourth time of asking, it will cement my place in Premier League history because I've contributed a lot, but until you actually win one, then you're not a champion. High stakes cash legend, now in his first Premier League, Frenchman David Benjamin. Of course, it's always a great feeling to win, and I can't wait to, for that feeling again. He's poker's eccentric, chatterbox, and current World Open champion, Unabomber Phil Locke. Winning poker tournaments, it's like euphoric. If I can get to that moment again, that would be phenomenal. I would love it. Runner-up last season, he's back for his fourth Premier League, and this time he's brought his bike, the mouth from down under, Tony G. The real Tony G is passionate, committed to poker, got the heart and commitment to the game. I love to play, and no matter what, I'll be a big threat all the way through. He's notched up the two biggest caches live and online outside of the WSOP, Yevgeny Timoshenko. I'm very technical uh, when it comes to tournament poker. I think I, I know the map better than anyone in this lineup. He's second in all-time tournament earnings with four WSOP bracelets, Canadian Daniel Negreanu. When I come into something like this, I feel like one of the favorites because I feel like I understand the format just as well as anybody. And I'm driven, you know, I have plans on having a really big year and, uh, you know, winning the Premier League would definitely be a feather in the cap. He's the all-time leading WSOP bracelet winner and Poker Hall of Famer, poker brat Phil Helmuth. Bring it on, let's fight, baby. I mean, let's go for it, let's have some fun. This is a great chance to kind of just go, Ch -ch -ch, Premier League winner, 2010, done. Ch -ch -ch. I'm 10 out of 10 on the passion scale. I wanna play Premier League. I can't wait to get to the table. Put me down at the table right now, let's go. I don't wanna wait, baby. Three players over there starting stack, but we're still eight handed here. There's going to be a lot of sort of looking at the points totals and leaderboards that go on because. Three folds. You know, there is simple. no money Fold five. for this heat. Fold it's only points which can get you a seat at the final thousand. table. Six, seven. Right, which is an unusual structure. It, Changes the value of cool seat eight fold one and two. The different outcomes possible in play. Up. This pot looking two ways. And to Leo Shikanchi, um, looks like he just decided to get a little bit busy. I 8, wonder. That's a straight out steal from the cutoff. Yeah. It, He's in pretty late position. It's a loose open for sure, but. Race. Race, yeah. Now, what is this about? 20,000. No pair, no draw. Yeah. <laughs> I guess he must have some sort of feeling that Talal is 
a little light for some reason here, and he would be right. Oh, seven. Yeah, for one reason or another, Kai Sheeler. Not moves to see. Just reach into there and grab that pot. Yeah, that's a little weird. You see the cards go out there. You don't think nine, seven, and ace five are putting a bunch of chips in the pot in the sand. <clears throat> it's going to be fun to see which of these players is sort of willing to to prey on the guys who look like they're hanging around. Mm -hmm. I mean, but it it, ta it should take a couple of levels to figure that out, shouldn't it? Or yeah, I think so. I think Anderberg might be earning himself that image right now Follow with all the bots four. he's been playing. He, even though from here where we can see his cards, Raise it doesn't six, look six, like he's getting too out five, of line. 6,000. Uwe Ritter with six, a triple the bet. And here Cold comes seven. Talal. Fold eight. Fold One fold. King queen. Two folds. Three calls. I think this only the second pot that Fantini has played. Excuse me, Paul Riggin has played. <laughs> Three ways, a little Set something left. for Set. everyone. Three. Set five. And is this an automatic bet here from Talal? Check 10, to him. Yeah. Six, seven. yeah, probably so. There's not much reason to think he has anything other than Call the best six, hand. Three. And five. Heads up. Well, we saw Talal check a top pair on the turn after getting action on the flop. I wonder what his plan is for this pot. This is a pretty dry board. Both players have every reason to think their hands are good. Though that did complete one of the few draws out there. Now Riggett is going to lead 20, out there. Three. And that's scary if you're Shikerchi, isn't it? Yeah, it is. I I think Riggett means to be betting for value and to protect his hand and to get called by worse, but he might end up bluffing Shikerchi off a chop here. I mean, talk me through this. If you're Shikerchi, what are you thinking? You're on 92,000 or so, and the bet is 20. You're looking at a situation where you very well could be facing a shove for the rest of your chips on the end. So very tough to call now without the intention of sticking your stack in on the river, if you're asked? I think so. I think that... Oh, so. It's weird. He, he has laid it down. I, I kind of like that C2. fold. Sure, Riggett could easily have played a set uh, like that or something. Or 9-7 is right. the single scariest possibility. Riggett finding a way to win that, and Shikerichi just doesn't know. But if he looks down close to his starting stack, maybe that's a good place to be. All these players, of course, have come through literally thousands uh, in sort of the regional online qualifiers to get here. But most of those tournaments, multi-table tournaments, not Seven just sort of sit and go Eight format. Fold. One fold. But we're seeing a pretty good standard. Raised yep. to 5,000. Say two. Three folds. And that was Fantini from and the button two. with two and a half times the big blind. Two players. I think I saw the 8-4 suited. I think so. percentage of buttons would you be raising right now if you were at that table? I if it was folded to you? Very nearly Seven. all of them. If I look down see a couple unsuited cards below seven, I, I might let them go, but real happy to see something like eight four suited and raise it up. <laughs> raise on two. Nineteen thousand. Now, this is a curveball here. Safina has let out from the big blind with top pair and Fantini has raised this up. Uh, what, 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 this is this is what they call the, the just the, a dunk means weakness type of bet, isn't it? Yeah, and it often does. 
very frequently when a player leads in a spot like that, it's because they've flopped the sort of hand that they feel like, well, I've got a little piece, but probably not enough to check call something like Jack-9 on this board. So they lead out to try to take the initiative and Rice. not have to make that kind of hard decision. Wow, and Safina! With not going to be pushed around. I mean, this is a massive bet here, 000. and very so cool. unusual. I, I, I mean, has he sensed something, or is he really committed to this King-7 with his stack? Well, after making it 40k, I don't see how he's going to fold if he gets shipped on. I don't I don't think that Pentini is going to ship it here, though. I've seen stranger things. Oh, yeah, there it goes. Pentini messing around with the wrong man. Safina in no mood to pull top pair. Yes, Why should he? The Premier League boys have arrived here in Las Vegas to prepare for what will be the greatest season yet. One and a half million dollars to play for and the title of Premier League champion. Welcome back. The initial nerves have worn off a little. Players settling in, but the pressure never eases up for these eight. First time, first Six match five. out of two to try and get those points for the final. And you want to start off well. Seven points. Safina has. He's Eight chip folds. leader right now. One fold, two fold, three fold. And here's Safina who's <gasps> All of a sudden, starting to feel his oats, although a nice hand in a small a blind. 6,000 total. Pressure on Uwe Ritter. Cool. C5. Heads up. Action cards for both players, and the action will be on the small blind. Uh-oh. That's going to be trouble for Safina. Especially after how we saw him play the King-7 on the last hand. I think the chips are going in here. Although... From what you've just said about the strength of top pair, probably not getting his whole stack in against the big blind here would Same be a four. mistake overall, wouldn't it? Probably so, unless the big blind's going to play very passively. Then, yeah, Safina has flopped a big enough hand here that there's really no reason to expect Raised him to go to anywhere. 20, Ritter giving him the option. Two pair for him. And a call. Just a call, so we'll have to wait for the turn to put all the money in. Couple cards. There are some yeah. action killers out there. Queen, for instance, perhaps. An ace. E yeah. Even on a queen, Safina picks up the open ender, so. Check back. Check. Suit four. The spot 52,000. 12,000. Suit five. Ritter, who has got 50 in front of him, has he underbet this? That's a very small bet, he, with only about 50 in front of him as well. Cool. I would have just put it in. King or queen, and that's unlucky for Uwe Ritter. Wonder if Safina will move in here or just check. I don't think he's getting any chips out of Ritter either way, but. Sizing each other up. Maybe he's gonna go for a small lead and hope just get a little curiosity mm. call out of him. Twenty thousand. See full. Yeah. Now if you're Uwe Ritter right now, obviously the Queen a horrible card. What can you beat? Ace Jack, Ace Ten. That's about it. It's pretty hard to find a hand you're beating here. Jack nine. No, not possible that he's turning Jack-9 into a bluff, but yeah, Ace-Jack or Ace-10 could get turned into a bluff here, I guess. I don't think he can call. It's no fun to see that river card on the biggest stage of your life, is it? No. And this decision, no fun. You can fold here and have 39,000 left. Is it enough? Sure, there's no reason to just burn 20 of it now. That's still 40% of your starting stack, still 20 big blinds. Gonna have a nice 
nice, calm think about this. I like the way he's taking his time. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, that's a good fold. Classy but pass. I'm glad to see him do that. For Safina, two in a row, though. And that Not one, a big Just show the jack. Get a little needle in there. Just the <laughs> jack. You can do it. What could have been? But Uwe Ritter staying alive. at the leaderboard. Obviously, we're still eight, but if they finished like this, Safina going for, I think it's 18 points. And the blind's going up, Isaac. What do you see about this for the second level? Well, there's going to be a lot of pre-flop action now, I would anticipate. And outside, Gloria has managed to catch up with Daniel Negranu. I'm joined by Daniel Negranu. So what's going through your mind as you head into the Premier League? Well, I'm a bit of a stats geek. I've watched the show and I really like sort of point systems and things like that. So really what goes through my mind is just the nerdy stuff that, that a lot of players probably won't do and just trying to figure out how many points do I need to advance? Um, you know, if I win the first one, what do I need in the second one and all that sort of stuff. And of course, I'll be, you know, looking at the field and sort of kind of trying to figure out what, you know, what, how my opponents play, what, how many points they need. Trust me, I'm a complete nerd when it comes to this stuff. It's all about the points, baby. Yeah, there you go, there you go. You're on the bottom. What do you need to know? <laughs> so Daniel, you're a pretty well-known player, but what are maybe five things that viewers at home may not know about you? Well, I'm an awful singer, but I love to sing. I have a karaoke machine at the house. Let's dance. Put on your red shoes and dance, dance the blues. I also have, number two, an arcade, which is an arcade system with 8,000 video games and a keg of beer. That's so sick which is pretty hot. Um, I'm a vegan. Uh, I don't do the cow, the pig, none of that stuff, no dairy. Eat some of that. I'm a bad golfer, but I might be one of the best putters in the world. Now the tiger isn't playing much. Um, and aside from that, um, I like making prop bets with Phil Homeyuth because uh, he pays my bills. Come on, let's see, what do you want to bet? Okay, I'll give you six to one on winning this whole thing. I don't have to gamble. You're the one that has something to prove. Let me get some of your thoughts on the players, such as Luke Schwartz. Legend, in it? I feel like I've been owned this hand. Big pimpin' now, isn't it? No, really, uh, Luke is a guy that I think is great for poker. He's a little bit of a villain. Uh, you're either gonna love him or you're gonna hate him, but you'll have an opinion one way or the other. I wanna make a donkey call and, and hear it. I want you to just lay in on me. Like, what are you doing? How bad are you? No wonder you're washed up and never win anymore. I want all of it. What about Phil Helmuth? Phil Helmuth, um, the self-proclaimed um, best no-limit hold'em player in the world, I beg to differ. I paid my 100,000 to just hear you. Yeah, you ought to work on your own stick someday, I mean. Damn it. <laughs> I think he was a good player years ago with his approach. Unless he uh, wakes up and realizes that these young kids can play, uh, he'll be left in dust. <laughs> you kids today. There you go. Daniel's thoughts on his fellow players, but does he have the chops to take it down? We'll find out. Very few hands have been shown yet. W what sort of misinformation is, is going on right now as far as players' perceptions versus reality? Well, I think that Safina and oh. Enderberg are both looking a lot looser than oh. they're actually oh. playing. And oh. it wouldn't be surprising oh. to oh. see somebody else make a mistake based on Price. that gay in real light against one of those two guys. Raise the 13,000. Small blind, big blind. Oh. Oh. A raise and call. Talal versus Kai Sheeler. And we saw these players square off earlier. Schiller came over the top of Talal with absolutely nothing on the flop. Has a good opportunity to do it again here, except it won't work out so well this time. Continuation bet coming. 18,000. I'm sorry. Now we're we're gonna we're gonna get to find out if if Sheeler's got good timing. Oh. It's, looks like some good timing. Yeah. Knows when to. You'll notice how big the pots are getting yeah, quickly there. That was a raise and a call from small to big. A bet on the flop and one more bet would have put all the chips in. <laughs> yeah, it's a bit thin on the ground, isn't it? <laughs> And there is going to come an opportunity or a time in this heat, Isaac, when sort of that ability to just kind of keep picking up those blinds is going to be 
It's going to be like life saving, awesome. isn't it? We're really already there. The starting stacks, 25 big blinds. You steal the blinds, you pick up one and a half big blinds. Oh. That, that's a lot. Early indications oh. are that both oh. Talal Shakerchi and Marco Fentini nice. are the guys that uh, are going to make 10, their 000. own noise. Oh. I think so. Pump oh. is back oh. into the fray here. Two and a half times the big blind. And, I mean, Safina, defending the big blind, on the one hand, he's got chips. On the other hand, it's the ace-deuce. $13,000. There's a lot of money in the pot already. He bets 13, 13 more to call, and now there's 48 in there, and... 90 more to play. Call. Oh my well, gosh. Poor Pontus Anderberg. Yeah, I, I think Pontus might be losing the rest of his chips here. 13,000. Maybe Pontus can get away. It's hard to see him going anywhere. Oh. We know Pontus is behind, but really, overall, if he if he's not willing to get his chips in here, he's probably playing too weak, right? I mean, he's in trouble. Probably. It, it's so hard to guess how often somebody you've never played with before is going to be bluffing in this spot. It's kind of an unusual play to check call the flop and then lead the turn. Now he's leading again on the river, I'm sure. Full house for Safina. All he's thinking about right now is how much can I get from this guy? How much is Pontus willing to call? 24,000. It's possible to fold. I would think so. I, I, I would never fold if I were Pontus here. First two of this evening, huh? Oh, yes. Nice And poor Pontus Anderberg. Ouch! Splat! Sophia's got him. That's a big pot. That is a big pot. He has a big, big lead That's now. More than double play. second place. I mean, he, he's really the only one significantly above starting stack now. Two up, four out, second level. Kerchi with the 4,000 big blind. Action on the German, Kai Schieler. Oh. Raise to 10,000. Boy, that was just what the doctor Hold. ordered Hold. from Pontus. Hold. One to go, and he wouldn't mind a call here. <coughs> He's decided to call here. He's obviously suspicious. I mean, this is yeah. Pontus after losing the big pot. Check. I'm envisioning check raise all in here. Probably so. Bet for 15,000. All and in. for Shakerchi, I mean, that 34% oh. equity he's got right now, that's about the worst spot he can be in, right? Yeah. Mm. Oh! And it just went to 100. <laughs> it did, and for Pontus Anderberg, what a start in this qualifier. The um, turn has not treated him well today. He's going to be seeing deuces and fives in his dreams. Out first. Still going to be a chance for him to make that final table, but he's going to have his work cut out for him. You have another chance to come back. Yeah. Does it change your, your strategy now? Yeah, I have to play even more aggressive next one uh, because I have to win it to, to get through. So, yeah, I don't know. Well, good luck with that. Thanks very much. Thanks. 
Well, with the blinds still at two and four, everyone who has their starting stack on 25 big blinds starting to get to that time where you're thinking, I can let, I can let the blinds go through me once, maybe twice, before my re-raising stack is gone. Right. Well, the blinds are going to go up Raise soon, so for that reason, that Home. might be true, but Home. with no antis, you probably have some chance of re-stealing with as few as 15 or 16 big blinds. Great spot for Shakerchi. Safina's opened. Right. And he's announced re-raise. And this is the only player at the table who has more chips than him. Are you free betting here all the time with aces? No, it, there are a variety of good reasons to slow play the aces here, but Safina has not seemed like the type of guy who likes to fold so far. So against him, making a small raise and hoping he calls and you see a flop and he picks up a big enough piece that you can get the rest of it there. Oh, but sure enough, he did fold. Broke. Sure did, and Shikerchi's thinking, what could have been? Yeah. It's also the sort of spot where you can trap somebody yeah. behind you for a big re-raise by just calling. Mm -hmm. One of the loosest players at the table opens, you're seen as another of the loosest players at the table, you just call. That's the type of spot that all these 25 big blind stacks are looking for to shove. wonder if guys like Fantini and Paul Riggett are already thinking to themselves, all right, just hold on. Oh. <laughs> just hold oh. on a little bit and see if you can, oh. you know, it might not be the best Race. day in the world, but let's not make Race. it the worst. 13,000, hold. Mm -hmm. And Riggett with the ace king Call. on 96,000. A lot of players would have re-raised there, okay. Isaac. I probably would have re-raised there, yeah. Um, though maybe he's hoping to get Safina to come in behind him, like he's shown quite a willingness to do. And this the disaster. Check. Not that his opponent's got top pair, but that he's missed the flop. Um, it was going to happen a lot, so what do you think his plan was? Check fold, perhaps? Probably. I, I expect him to check fold here. 20,000. 20,000 is the bet. People like their ace kings, though. We might just ship it. Fold. Survivalist fold. Yeah. And if you're going to just call free, I think getting away from it when you completely miss is the thing to do. Both players stay alive. Sheeler slightly more so. Tournament director Mad Marty Wilson has announced blinds up to three and six thousand. You can wait, but it's going to cost you. There's not that much more waiting left to be done. Ritter down to five big blinds. Back for more after the break. Welcome back to Premier League Poker 4. Half of the online qualifiers and the party poker pros are here in the poker room trying to qualify for a seat in the Premier League. While over in the Ravello bar, Jesse May and Isaac Haxton are watching the remaining onliners league match. Lines up to three and six thousand. Pressure on the short stacks. Seven handed. Yes, definitely a decision for Uve. What would you do? Hold. Hold. Under the gun. I, I would put it in. Yeah, and the reason being? Raise, 14,000. Got six and a half big blinds. King, queen's a pretty good hand. That's enough. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> I, I do actually think it's close. I think you shouldn't be going with Hold. king 10. Hold. Hold. guessing that Uve's decision is sort of uh, he's giving a lot of weight to the idea that if you if you fold 
someone might get knocked out in the meantime, and that extra point or two could be really important. I think so. I think he might be underestimating his chances of coming back to win, win it with his 40,000 right now and overestimating the value of moving up a, po a place or two in the ladder. Which Maybe is overestimating his chance of succeeding in doing that by playing overly tight right now. And, and that's going to be an easy mistake to make in this sort of format, isn't it? Yeah, it is. And I, I'm not even confident I'm right about what I'm saying here because it's an unusual format and... It also depends so much on how your opponents are playing. It doesn't seem like the other players are in any hurry to get busted. A little continuation bet from Shakirchi, who rhythm-wise has just kept his toe in the water. He's raising whether he gets the cards or not, Isaac, at least once around. Yeah. Yeah, it's an interesting approach. And it's been working out for him. He hasn't been getting a whole lot of resistance when he decides to make these opens. What you want to do at this point is try to come up with a correlation in your head, whether it's an exact number or just a rough idea, between where you finish in this heat and your overall probability of advancing to the next round. Is the winner of this heat <coughs> guaranteed to advance to the next round? No, but I, I think the winner of this heat will, have to, will probably be guaranteed Race unless he comes in last 000. or mm -hmm. second to last next round. But I, I hear what you're saying, that a lot of times people get to a short stack and they think, well, I'm not going to win this anymore which is not really true. I mean, you can no. come back from a short stack, can't you? Yeah. Yeah, in a freeze-out tournament like this, your chance of winning is roughly proportional to the number of chips you have. The guy with 30,000 wins about a third as often as the guy with 100,000. That's still a bunch of the time. Well, Safina's raised this 22,000, and Shiler in the big blind, he's probably feels like his hand is too strong to fold. Phone? All in's an option. All in is definitely an option. Please let it go. Didn't like the call, didn't like the re raise. Maybe. Didn't like playing against Safina, who's a bit of a terror. He's a demon. Not scared of anything. It'll be Shikerchi on the button here. With only two opportunities to earn league points, oh. a win so valuable, and already oh. some players in trouble. Oh. Oh. And we haven't seen this. shikarchi has been pretty active oh. from his buttons. Just a limp in now from Sheeler. He decided to play the flop, and he's not going to win this pot anymore. Yeah, Sheeler might even trap here, huh? Yeah, Sheeler could go either way. Bet. Looks like he's bet. 8,000. And I would not expect Fantini to mess around here, but I've been wrong before. He's looking at his chips. When you check back from the big blind, a three's in your hand fairly often. Race. 19,000. He can pretty credibly represent it. With 5-4, he can pick up some straight outs on a bunch of different turn Two cards. 19. 19 total. But he's running to a good top pair here, so I don't think he's getting Sheeler off it on the flop anyway. Interesting to see if he follows up on the turn. Good thinking, bad timing. Oh, that oh. that's not a turn Check. that's going to work out well for him. Except that maybe he'll give up. He'd respect him so much for shoving here, and yet it's going to go so wrong. 
There's no way he's ever, he's ever 24, told 24,000? I don't think so. Before he turned two pair, there might have been, but... Fantini now drawing dead. Taylor calls again. Yeah, and a pretty good call. I mean, sort of the idea that if the guy is bluffing, I'm going to let him continue, right? Right. I think that he thinks that Fantini is either bluffing or has a, th a three, usually. 35. Or maybe not, because now he's firing out. Fantini momentarily now sort of confused by that five on the river. It's yeah. a barrage, though, right? Yeah, he can't call here. I, I don't see what he can think he's beating. Very creative player, obviously, this Fantini, but his timing has just been broken. Yep. And, uh, I know you don't like to be results-oriented, Isaac, so... <laughs> at, at least he didn't compound it by paying off there. Nice pot for Sheeler, max value, or close to it, anyway. Let's catch up with Phil Helmuth, who's getting his game on and having some fill time. Hello, everyone. This is Glory Balding. I snuck into the men's spa here at the M Hotel, and who did I find but Mr. Phil Helmuth? So you're relaxing before the Premier League. What's going through your mind? We really have to stop meeting this way. People <laughs> will start talking. Uh, I'm, I'm kind of uh, looking forward to the Premier League in 2010 here, and 09 was my worst year ever in poker. So. I feel like I have something to prove coming out. And they just put me on the cover of three magazines in 2010. And I'm like, why? And there's something about a comeback. I'm like, a comeback? All right, well, if you insist. Zoom, zoom, zoom. Wow. I love it. I love it. Now, you are a legendary poker player. But let's, for the viewers at home, give me five reasons why you're awesome. <laughs> five reasons why I'm awesome. I guess everybody thinks I have a big ego, like this is easy or something. Um, I will say the number one reason that I feel really good about myself is that, you know, that I feel like I have perfect honor and integrity. I've always had a respect for the greatest players and they for me. Perfect morals. I'm gonna say those are one through three. Number four, um, you know, 11 bracelets and, and all of the World Series of Poker records. I'm, I gotta go with that, that's pretty cool. Number five, I feel like uh, you know, I have a lot of fun in life. Let's party, kid. I have this great enthusiasm for poker. I have this great enthusiasm for life. You gotta stay positive, you gotta stay positive. That shows up on the cameras and it shows up in my life and it's it's one of the reasons why, you know, maybe the fifth reason why I think, you know, it's the fifth thing I'm proud of. Well, thank you so much, Phil. You may wanna get dressed before you head to the table, just maybe. Come on, man, I mean, what do you mean? I have my bracelet on, <laughs> come on. I, I mean, I've got my bracelet and my wedding ring. What else do I need? It doesn't matter what I show up in, right? You are set for the table, and you'll see Phil at the table here at the Premier League. Time to look back at a classic Phil Helmuth hand from Premier League 2. Raise again. Raise, Raise them all, fish. Well, fuck Every yes. pot. A lot of rugby yes is out in this. Jeez. Uh, and Andy Black's got a handy. Cool. I don't like this call, you know, I should raise it. If it comes any over cards, Phil can take it away from him with him. I don't like the call. I should be raising. Hey, look. <laughs> What's he going to do now? Wow. Checking. Look at this. Check. Wow. Of course he's checking. Check. Unbelievable, huh? That's a, a nine ball comes off here. going to. Oh, look at this cold deck. <laughs> Unbelievable. Oh so this, is this could be the end of Helmuth this in the Premier League. Should, if he'd have raised there, if, if Andy had have raised there, it would have been the end of him, I'll tell you that now. Helmuth would have more stacked off. Well, Helmuth's going to bet again, and, and Andy's going to raise. I mean, there's no way that Helmuth could feel like he's beat here, right? The only Andy's scared of is two nines, I see. Check. I can't believe he's checked it. How, <coughs> how has he checked it? I don't know. 14,000. If Helmuth raises, he was out the tournament. If he raises, I can't see how he can call. This has to be a check raise, right? Yeah, yeah, really, it has to be. I mean, he's, he's playing so t he's playing too tight to win this. I think if he, to win this tournament, if he uh, if he just calls, yeah, I mean, wow. There is absolutely no way he can think Andy Black has a big. I mean, even if he reads him strong, right? He's got it. He's raise got it. a raise. Yeah, raise. there comes a raise. Now Andy's going to move in on him probably. And I mean, Andy's only scared of two aces. He's got to, he's got to move in on him. Twenty-six. Twenty-six thousand more. 
this is like uh, this is a Christmas here for Andy Black. I can't believe Holland. it. Yeah. Holland. That's the moment. Now he's now Phil's sick now. Now Phil's going <coughs> to tell me he's got two nines because Phil knows he's got two nines now. Oh, it's a total bluff. He knows he's got two nines. Oh my! Look at Phil's face. Wow. Gotta feel sorry for Phil. I mean, what a fishy, fishy, fishy. Who knew I'd make a full house this early in the game, buddy? I don't know, buddy, but you're I think it's you. bye bye, Phil. You're I don't right. know how I can lay this down. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe it. <laughs> I'm trying to lay this down, but I can't do it. How much does he have? <laughs> Did he turn nines full on me? Yeah, that's the one, buddy. I know you. That's the only I'm just scared of. He's it's laughing about it. He can laugh about it. Well, that. he's laughing because he can't believe it. You know, he's, you know. Wow. It's, it's, it's flopped to full house. And the, you know, this only happens on TV, you know. It's this amazing, is this sick. stuff, huh? Wow. This is sick. Oh, this is what it's going to take to get me out of the Premier League. Hands like this one, I guess. I, I can't lay this down. Six is full is good. Nine's, buddy. That's unfortunate. Wow. There was Space no five. way out. Made a straight on the end. Is he out? I don't know what the chip situation was, but I think... Fish! I think he's out. Oh my gosh. What the fuck? I feel bad for you, Phil. That's disgusting. I flapped a full house, and I'm out. That's so sick. That's the rest of these players are all in with fours and fives and sevens and eights and nines. I flopped a full house, and I'm out. Yeah. So sick. That was, well, very, that was very unlucky. Cold act. I want, I want the limo. I'm ready to go. Action moving fast in the poker room. Our second group of online players down to six in their opening league match. Meanwhile, our party poker team throws in the midst of their first match of three. Just one of them will take their place in the main event, and it's not been a great start for Mike Sexton, KO'd by Ian Fraser. Our first match here for the team pros is underway. We've lost Mike Sexton. Now, as members of a team, normally you guys don't play against each other. What's that been like? Well, we don't, and, you know, we're good friends, and we pull for each other. You know, we're not involved, but when we're sitting at the same table with each other, you're trying to bust each other, and, you know, it's the nature of the game. That's the job. That's the business at hand, and only one of us are going to advance to the finals of the Premier League, so we're all trying to win, believe me. Will it change your strategy going into the next matchup now, knowing where you finished in this one? I'm hoping the next couple of rounds go a little bit better than this one. It can't get any worse. <laughs> so I've only got one way to go, and that's up. So hopefully it'll be my lucky run next time around, and maybe I can take down a table. Well, thanks for talking to us. Okay. Good luck. Thank you. Well, these guys can sympathize with the pros. They're trying to win a seat, and so are these qualifiers. It ain't easy, but it's nice to still be in. Chasing that elusive 16 points. For first. And Ritter. He's got five big blinds, and oh. you know it's 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 gonna oh. it's gonna become three oh. uh, one way or the other in about three hands. Yep. Race. Race. There's a lot of stories about a chip in a chair, but you hear them a lot more often than they happen. That's certainly true. It's not much of a story when you get down to three chips and then bust. <laughs> Great spot for Paul Riggett if he knows it. You talked about tough decisions. How much is this a tough decision? How much is it automatic? This is automatic. He's got 12, 13 big blinds. He picks up jacks against an open from the cutoff. This is really automatic. He should put the chips in and be happy about it. Is, is there any idea that he might want to call um, and, and you know, if it comes an ace-king on the flop or something like that, get away from it? Or? Well, if he does call, yes, he might want to get away on those boards. But that opportunity to get away on the really terrible flops is not worth letting your opponent who, you know, 19 right. times out of right. 20 is behind right now see a flop. Riggett agrees. He's announced all in here. And it's going to come back around to Kai Sheeler, who oh. is probably going to ask for a count first and decide second. <laughs> How much? Yeah, it's a somewhat close spot, made closer by the fact that Sheeler, by this point, probably knows Riggett is on the tight side. 
going to be about well, 60 odd thousand. 79,000. Getting about just a little over six to four. On the other hand, it's just about half his stack. You'd lean fold? there towards the fold? I think so. I, I. Rigid is not the type of player I'm expecting to show up with, like, Queen 10 suited in that spot. So, the Ace 9 is usually against a pair or a better Ace. Well, right now, Shikerchi, he's there in the. Big blind, chip leader along with Safina. And when the blinds go to, oh. there's jockeying now, but when the blinds go to oh. five and ten, things oh. are going to start becoming forced, aren't they? Oh, yeah. I mean, you often see these sort of super satellite situations, Isaac, when, uh, you know, guys routinely will get down to one big blind, two big blinds. Yeah. Is there going to be that kind of element to this? There could be. That happens so much in super satellites because, for one thing, Super satellites are tournaments where the top to X spots, eight spots, or whatever, all pay the same. So finishing eighth is just the same as finishing okay. first. You just want to last long enough. And secondly, they're nine-handed. So I don't think that the effect will be quite as strong here. We've got action here. And obviously the queen's a huge hand. How does Shikerchi have to weigh the value of the chip leader raising into him? I mean, Safina's been so loose. Shikarchi doesn't have to be at all worried that he doesn't have the best hand here. And this is the second time he's re-raised Safina's open. So even on the first re-raise when he had aces, I was saying, I think we can expect Safina to play back pretty light. I think that's doubly true this time. And yet, um Neither player right now wants to get all their chips in them. I mean, you, you, in this sort of situation, you, you were very wary about these kind of pots, right? Yeah, you are on the one hand, but on the other, these are the two guys who've shown some willingness to mess around. That's how they've gotten their chips in the first place. Safina shows the ace. Shows the ace and folds. Sort of an interesting decision there. <coughs> Lines going up, five and ten thousand. What do you make of the next level? By all rights, the next level should be a bloodbath. There are three stacks, ten big blinds are under now, and the chip leader is 23 bigs. So, somehow, Ritter and Fantini have avoided putting their chips in up to this point, and bigger as well, but I, I don't see how it can continue much longer. It's do or die time after the break. Still seven left, and Isaac, very shortly, we're going to get to see if Uwe Ritter's gamble has paid off. The gamble letting himself get so short stacked to try and move up a few spots. Yeah, somebody is going to be busting very soon, or doubling up, I suppose, but got three players under five big blinds now. Somebody's got to do something. Safina and Shakerchi, the big stacks, only on 20 nice. big blinds, Race. but it's more because everyone thousand. else has less. Is that the idea? Yeah. Although, effectively, Safina putting in a raise up to 30,000. I mean, how many player stacks has he got to be committed against? Well, certainly the 50,000 stack. He's in a kind of nasty spot if Schiller shoves out of the big blind there. Looks like he probably will call it off with Ace-8. I, I would expect him to. He's going to be pretty disappointed if he comes in seventh here, Uwe. And I believe that seventh is going to mean that he needs to win to get in the top four. Maybe second will get him in. It's going to be some fascinating stuff when these guys play their, their second match as far as you know you can play a pot against one opponent nice. but not play right. a pot against another opponent. Right. And, uh, 
fucking yeah, 25,000. Yeah, the subtleties of the point system Literally. really come into play the second time around. Uh, Rigget went oh, an open shove, the very last hand. Here he's made it 25, and... Oh, I thought Safina was trying to figure this out, but not too much to figure out. It, it is... All in. Is it full? Like he had made up his mind to call Rigget. Yeah. Things are pretty different now, though. Though if he puts it in, then Rigget folds, which with the hand he in fact has, he probably will. Okay, There's so a lot it. of money in the pot dead from Rigget and from the small blind for to subsidize his call well, against Safina. Even if Safina's got a bigger ace, ace king or something like that. If that's the hand he feels like he'll be up against. Well, it's the same. Probably though. not quite good enough, it's but right. it makes it a lot closer. Hmm. <laughs> I'm just going to milk this for some air time now. This is the only chance I get to <laughs> two hours. He's got 38,000 back. Well, I know who wants me to fold, that's for sure. I, I, I feel like because of Uve that... I don't know, yeah. that there are some reasons to fold. I, I think I'd be passing here, and I'm not sure why. It just seems like... Yeah, with Uve on right, 7,000, and fold. some chance Rigget calls here and gets busted. <coughs> Safina takes it down. That, that seems like a spot where waiting around to move up a spot or two is pretty worthwhile. I think that uh, Bigger made a good fold there. Not happy about it. That ace four suited was one of the better okay. hands he's seen tonight. Mm -hmm. Uve down to just a couple of chips, and that's all. <coughs> Here comes Safina. Christ. Okay. Raised to 25,000. All in. All in. Well, Seven. he's found a good Seven. spot. 7,000. Should be a chance to triple up. thing it's not a big race is there a worry though if you're Sheila right now when you have a hand like this this kind of situation that this is a good way to get yourself in a lot of trouble as well I don't like Sheila's call here the side action five four suited just doesn't play well in this spot there's not a lot of money left to play there's a bunch of money in the side pot so he has to Check check. Actually check. improved to win that check. part of the pot. And then there's this kind of situation where you've got exactly half a hand. You yep. can't call any bet. You, there's not a card that can come where it's going to make you even like your hand, is there? I mean, the five would probably be best. The six is not bad. Check. But, yeah, it, it's not a good spot. And it looks like Safina is going to take this down that with his river king and eliminate Ritter. Not the way he wanted it to go Things tonight, good. Uwe Ritter, but obviously he's still going to be live for his next match. And not going to be handing himself away that match either because he has to go guns blazing, and I'm sure he will. Meanwhile, Full Flush is in the building. Hello, everyone. This is Glory Balding. I'm joined by the irrepressible Luke Schwartz. You just got here for the Premier League. What's going through your mind right now? Um... Not much, just happy to be in Vegas, ready to own off whoever, whoever donks want to come test me. Is that good enough? 
You don't think I mess about? My head's off game. I will beat everyone in this whole party poker. It don't matter if I come there. It don't matter. So, Luke, you seem to be synonymous with controversy, but in truth, are you a lover or a fighter? I'm a lover, but if someone pushes me the wrong way, I could be a fighter as well. Oh, fuck this. Now let's do some quick word association with the players you will see this week. Okay, ready? Phil Helmuth. Fish. Tony G. Fish. Vanessa Russo. A woman, girl, poker player. Daniel Negreanu. A legend. Really? Yeah. So everyone else are fish, but him you have something nice to say about. Why? Because he's got $12 million in tournament winnings, he's a nice guy, he's just a Jew. He's in charge, isn't he? <laughs> Old baller. Yevgeny Tomashenko. He's a good tournament player as well, so yeah, I'd, I'd call him a shark. Really? Yeah. Even though he's so young, like yourself? Yeah, well, the younger the better in this game. The, the old guys are all donks. <sighs> Such a donk you are. Now that we've covered the players, how is your game right now? Well, I, I haven't really pl Actually, uh, to be honest, I'm pretty confident in this thing because I've played so many of these TV events. I've won every single time I've been in the heat. I've got to every single final. So this should be no different. So I'm confident about my game. I'm always confident about my game. Yeah! Yeah! You guys are in trouble now. Well, thank you so much, Luke. You can catch a full flusher at the Premier League. I have a feeling he'll do quite well. Every reason to expect that they are now going to fall like... 10 pins with Fantini here in the big blind. Now that Fantini is the shortest stack, I would expect him to be out of reasons to let anything reasonable go here. And 27. 27,000. Six, six. It's a kind of an interesting thing that I was going to say that bigger is done because well, he could be faced with a really awkward decision here. He almost might have... Well, well there's not really much decision. He's put in 27, 21 back. He's got to call it off right. to any action. But it, it is kind of awkward to raise to, you know... Raise to 60 percent of your stack or so there. What are you thinking of your fan team? You're, you're thinking... If you call it off here, you're risking 17, and I, I don't think it's good enough. Queen five's pretty bad. That's a cool. Yeah, bigger. He's he's gonna be pleased to see Shakerchi's hand in the sense that both his cards are live. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's five. one of the better hands he could see from Shikarshi, for five? sure. Yeah, queen five. And he's going to need yeah, more than a little bit of luck now. He's got backdoor clubs, and other than that, just runner. running trips or two pair. Mm -hmm. that, that's a club. For the Hope's a good thing. Oh, that won't do it, though. And we lose guys. another. Bigger out in sixth. <clears throat> the chip's really concentrated. Yep. Next off our feature table is Gary. Talk to me about the other uh, other players that are up at the table. Has it been quite aggressive, not so much? Uh, there's a lot of blind stealing going on, but I think every time there's been uh, a raise that's been called, we've seen uh, good cards played out. Um, I think a few times guys were pushed off hands, possibly. so. Uh, it'll be interesting to see what happens in the second heat and see whether the players are bringing the same game to it. And hopefully the cards will make it for a different dynamic. Meanwhile, over in the poker room, they're three-handed with the party team pros. Dragon Galich, Brazilian close, Felipe yeah. Ramos, okay, okay. and the Razor Ian Fraser. They're also three-handed at the Group 2 qualifiers table. So important to get that early victory. Safina, just having a little look around the stacks to his right and left for you. Raise to 20,000. And the bet size is the min raise. A oh. couple of pairs behind him. Cool. Let's we'll see what happens. All in. 
Fantini just going for value here, and Riggett in the big All blind. All in. Wow. C3. Uh, smart play? I think so. I think that that's exactly what he should be doing here. Not many sequences of events that lead to folding pocket eights in this spot. I, I don't see how Skeeler can fold here. Upside, so huge. But he's laying yeah. down, and when Riggett turns over these yes. eights, Shearer is going to pat himself on the back until the seven feels the flop. What do you got? <laughs> and for Fantini, this is one of the Beautiful. better situations you find seven. yourself in when you're all in with the nine seven. three. Twenty-seven percent equity in a seventy-four thousand dollar pot. It's a great spot. Just a little wow. old nine. There's the There's seven. There's the seven. <laughs> That was as sure as stuffing with turkey. A couple cards now for Fantini to survive here. The three, the eight. Two sevens. Nice Two seven. And seven Riggett five, will seven eliminate eights. Fantini and pick up quite a few additional chips in the uh, process. The right <laughs> we'll be back for more from Vegas as our onliners fight it out for the most coveted seat in poker at the Premier League table from the M Resort. Welcome back. The points are getting serious. Just moving up one place gets you closer. And Isaac, I mean, it's not about winning pots. Some of these guys are hoping their opponent loses one. Yeah, absolutely. You're always rooting for other players in a tournament to play big pots Race. and bust each other. Raise T3. The 25,000. Safina having a little look here. Does he have fold equity? That's his question to himself. I think the answer is yes. I think that from what we've seen from Riggett so far, I would expect him to open this spot with quite a few more hands than he's willing to call the shove with. Safina, that's that's the money for the call now. He he could also just call here and try and figure it out after the flop. You don't mind that? You like that better cool. than a pass, for instance? I think I do. It's, it, it's tricky because it gives Shikershi the opportunity to either call or re-raise and make your life difficult. Certainly if you're going to flop top two, that makes the post-flop decisions easier. Riggett's having a deep breath here. I, I think he's going to make a big bet and go with it. Flopping a straight draw is pretty good. 30,000. 30, so he's bet, he's bet to call. I would assume so. He's going to be getting a very good price with an eight outer. All in. All in. Seat four. Well, he's already done a lot of good work today, Riggett. Cool. Cool. Yeah. Even if he goes out fourth, Gentlemen. he's going to have, uh, I'm guessing, a better than average chance of making it to the top nice. four spots. Yeah. All in for eight outs. And, and there it is. Riggett's got the jack of diamonds. Safina will need to fill up. It's huge for Paul Riggett. Yeah, Riggett doubles. Strike. And Safina is uh, down to far fewer chips than he's had almost all day. That was the first knock against Safina, she said. But he had the stack to take a hit. Let's hear from some Premier League players due to play in the main event. I managed to catch up with Tony G, who just rode by on his bike. He's going to be playing here in the Premier League. Now, you've got some very uh, specific ideas about some of our players. Talk to me about Luke Schwartz. Well, Luke Schwartz, I don't think he's capable of riding a bike. He's, uh, he's not well, so I'm gonna, I got a trike for him. Uh -huh. Roland DeWolf has been practicing riding the trike, so I think he's a capable driver. Okay. I'm just trying to help everybody and have something available for any of the any of the opponents. What, just so that they can exit gracefully when you knock them out? Yeah, I think it's a bit of fun and it's nice for them. It's also a, a quicker, you make a quicker exit. Hang on, where's the bike? Bike time. 
Now, what do you think your chances are here in the Premier League? Because there's a pretty good lineup, I'd say. Oh, I think my chances are reasonable. I mean, I'm going to just play my game and see what happens and try to enjoy, enjoy the, the play. That's the key. That sounds great to me. I'm going to let you go. Thanks for talking to us. Thank you. I'm here with Lady Maverick, Vanessa Russo. So how thrilled are you to be here at the Premier League? I am so excited. I, uh, I can't wait to uh, compete against the other um, 11 players. I mean, this is pretty much the toughest, as far as concentration of players, event that I've ever played in, and can't wait to see how I do. What's it like to ever hit a flop, like ever? Well played. I never have the best team. Now, of the 11 players you, you will be seeing this week, who do you think is your biggest competition, and who do you think is your least? I think I'm my biggest competition. <laughs> I mean, basically, I can get in my own way. So as long as I don't do that, I should be OK. And uh, as far as least competition, I guess it would have to be um, probably the qualifier, I guess, would, I'm assuming, be the least uh, experienced player at the table. And so um, I guess that's the one who uh, I have the biggest edge against. Now, there's a lot of personality at this table. Tony G, Luke Schwartz, Phil Helmuth. What are you going to bring to this table? I guess the feminine element, I mean, I'm going to hopefully try to keep the guys a little cool if they, you know, get their machos get going and, you know, they start to do that whole pissing contest thing, I guess, if you don't want to use that word, leap that out. Um, yeah, so I just, you know, try to keep things cool between the guys, kind of smooth it out if it gets rough around the edges. Thank you so much, Vanessa. You can catch her bringing a little class to the table here at the Premier League. Two Brits with the chips, Riggett from Southampton and Shikerchi from Birmingham. Shikerchi actually picks up a hand this time. This is uh, right. Looks like when you see Ace King here, you've got all spots of the Royal Flush and tough spot oh, for Oh wow, sure. and the blinds have some hands here. All in, all in. I think against, you, against Shikerchi's reign, this is an automatic, more. right? I think so. Oh my gosh. I think this one's very nearly automatic as well. He can be looking at this and saying to himself, look, if I pass these, I'm very often, very often can get in the top two spots anyway, right? It's not like Riggett is running a very large risk at all of busting this hand. Oh. Wow. Amazing pass. And a call. Amazing pass and- hey, Gentlemen, turn him up, please. I'd be interested, interested to hear what his thought process were. He's he's actually he's feeling very good right now, Riggett, about his pass. But somebody <laughs> doesn't believe him. Where are you from? He's saying. Sheila needs a queen. Didn't you know that? Riggett saying that was my chance to be chip leader. And a couple more outs here for Sheila, who's going to be out in fourth without a queen or a diamond. That'll do it. Down to three, and massive chip lead for Talal Shakerchi. Next up, our feature table is Kai. What does it mean to come and have a chance at playing in the Premier League for you? Uh, it's a dream to come here to Vegas and get this chance for playing the pros. And now I finished at fourth place, so I still got the chance. And now I'm at a heads up. If I got the, the place uh, till, till the next uh, table. Over in the poker room, the party pros have reached the heads up stage in heat number one. And Ian Fraser calling Felipe Ramos is all in. He's behind. One card to come. And for Felipe Ramos, it's a victory. Good shape. Razor not feeling too bad. There's still two heats left to play. Do you think there was a sense of everyone trying to get a, a feeling for each other at the table? Because you're going to be seeing each other again a couple more times. Yeah, I know like any any player that sits at a table to play against me, it's much easier to have a read because I like to play aggressive. Mm -hmm. So they n pretty much know that I play aggressive. So I try to input here just the opposite. So I started playing really tight mm -hmm. and everybody was looking at me like expecting me to push. I was folding my hands. <laughs> And I waited and I had some hands, so, all right, thanks. I know this is nothing, like it's the first step only, yeah. but I'll try to climb my way. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. Maximum points for Ramos after the first heat. Points will be converted to chips on the final table. Let's have a look at the standings. 50 points on offer per heat. And Ramos in the lead with 17. Good starts too for Fraser and Gallich, but Mike Sexton in trouble on the bottom with only five points.
And an interesting spot to talk about because you, when you look at the chip counts now, you see that Riggett is still a favorite to come in the top two spots, which I'm, I'm, I'm guessing is what he's saying, that that's, that's going to yeah. give me the most flexibility. And this is going to start getting very automatic for right. Jakerci, right? The, the play here is just keep putting pressure on Safina and Riggett until they pump back. I think so, yeah. As the short stack, That's where good. is Safina's best spot going to be to get his money in? Opening from the button, or perhaps here, small blind against the big blind? Either way, as long as he's the first one into the pot. I think with his stack now, what he wants to be doing is open shoving with a chance to win it pre-flop. Card's not so important. It would be nice to have something decent. If he's going to be calling it off, it matters a lot what he has. Mostly, I think he just wants to be shoving in a spot where he can get folds, though. Which might happen a lot more from his button. I do get the sense that um, Talal is going to be a lot more willing to make a thin call against Safina than Riggett will. So, and if Safina shoves from the button with Talal in the small blind and Paul in the big blind... Getting through two players there is actually going to be a little bit easier than getting through this one. Almost, yeah. Cool. cool. A bit of a curve ball, and you can see Shikarchi just sort of sticking Roll his... In. Yeah, he, he smelt that. Seven. Yep. And Safina's thinking, it's the last time I'll try that. Just tried it once. Probably half... You are getting three to one on your money there, so... It doesn't have to work all that often to be better than folding. But it's one of those spots where if you have anything reasonable open shoving, it is so appealing that it's kind of transparent to limp instead. Well, Shikerchi, solid chip lead over half the chips in play. and Desperate times for Giovanni Safina. Looks like enough, the big black snake Please just put the chips in. <laughs> so it's right. Times it's Race. just style. Trying to, to 40, sell a smoke screen. Ace Jack's so big three handed, though, right? Yeah, I can't imagine anything other than Chikarshi going all in here. I think he's just oh. thinking to cool. call, really. Huh. That's actually an interesting play. If Rickett shoves, there's a sort of a stop and he, go. He might type be able to get here. away, and now yeah. he's he's just going to stick it in on the flop now with right. only Unless about half hits. pot to play. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he might check if he nails it. All in. Yeah. Seven. And pretty impossible for Safina to fold. I mean, you I just, would think yeah. so. Uh, yeah, yeah, cool. He's there not going to feel great about Turn the up, situation. Gentlemen. But he can see all kinds of things. King Jack, King Ten, Jack Ten, Jack Nine. And the six, the eight, or the diamond, I think. Yep. Deuce for a win. Too bad. That's the wrong one. And we're down to two. Yeah, nice stuff tonight from Giovanni Safina. Certainly. Certainly went after it, and he'll be well in play for the final table. Absolutely. We'll be back with Heads Up in a moment. Welcome back to Party Poker Premier League Poker 4, coming to you from Las Vegas. Here at the M Resort, some of the world's most famous poker players will be battling it out to be champion. And alongside them, for the first time, an online qualifier will win a space in the tournament. Heads up, and the winner here, such a favorite to make the final table. This is so important. And Isaac, are these stacks suddenly playable? Cool. A bit that there's still around, what, 15 big blinds? 
Yeah, and with 15 big blinds, sort of the limp here from Riggett, uh, there's, a, there's a lot more reasons for it, right? Yeah. Yeah, I like limping the button with that sort of stack. Not crazy about the hand, perhaps, but... It's more than good enough. You can't be folding a queen heads up. Twenty thousand. I like Shakarishi's lead here. Um, I think that he's just going to get to win when Riggett doesn't have a pair a whole lot of the time. And he, he he's kind of he's almost made Riggett play for his whole stack there with with twenty thousand, hasn't he? Well, I don't know about that. He can call, and he still has one ninety to play in a pot at ninety. There there's some decisions left to be made on the turn and river there for sure. But. It, it does put a lot of pressure on Riggett, even for a relatively small bet. Look at the stats here. Obviously, Shikarchi more chips. What else do you notice? Shikarchi has a bigger number on every statistic. He's won three times as many pots today. He's stealing about twice as often when he has the opportunity. Shikarchi pretty much ran over the table today. Nobody tried to stop him. That 60% steal attempt over the course of the whole thing, that's that's a pretty uh, that's pretty saucy, isn't that, it? That, that's a hefty number. I, I like to steal the blinds, and I rarely get that high in <laughs> any sort of game. <laughs> that steal attempt, of course, uh, when it's been folded to you, and you have a chance to open, I think it's to cut off the button and the small blind. I believe right? so, yeah. yeah. It's computed the same way it is in the tracking software for online poker and whatnot. get a little interesting 15 plus how much rice rice about 37 42,000 42 42, 42. 42. Total. I wonder if Shikarshi's going to stick it in here I th I think that Riggett actually will probably fold if Shikarshi does shove making this an extremely profitable shove for Shikarshi I would think I was thinking about something. And it's pretty hard to get Delta Hand as good as King Seven. And getting away from it for fewer than 15 big blinds is Hold a bit mistake. And seven. Wow. This is this is really well thought out by Shakerchi, isn't it? I think so. He's he, he sensed that Riggett uh, was just a little bit feeling like he had to raise quite often here and might not be prepared to call as light as he needs to. Then again, he might. I think he should call here. Yeah. Shakerchi's really getting the best of him if he gets to make that shove and succeed against King-7. Massive play, too. I mean, to take his opponent down to 10 big blinds where... Yeah, his... Riggett just lost a quarter of his stack there. The big names keep coming in. Defending champion J.C. Tran in the house. Hello, everyone. This is Glory Balding. Now, I managed to catch some alone time with J.C. Tran out here by the pool. So tell me what you're feeling heading into this Premier League. I'm excited, really excited to come back and uh, defend my title. Um, Premier League coming to Vegas. Hopefully I can uh, use this quote-unquote home court advantage and uh, you know come out on top again. Now this table is full of characters. We have Phil, Tony. Talk a little bit about what you're going to bring to the table. Well, I'm going to bring me with just a little bit of uh, extra swagger just because I'm the, the defending champ. And, um, I'm going to come back and, you know, I'm going to have a little fun with these guys. I played you last year in the Premier League when, when we got heads up. I mean, I took you to Value Town with, like, ace high. Oh, and, <laughs> yeah, that's last sure, year. Sure. I can't, I can't right, say anything, JC. I, I can't fine. say anything. Just say what you want to say. It's I can't right. say anything for last year. Last year was over. So, JC, how would you describe yourself in three words? As a person, I'm nice, fun, and caring. You're a big teddy bear, dude. Just to my family and friends, not <laughs> poker players. Oh, wow. There you go. JC Tran, he is a cutthroat teddy bear here at the Premier League. A look back at a classic hand from last season's Premier League between JC and the Poker Brat. Cold. Phil's Phil's in a war here. No race. Deathly silent out there. Wow, they're concentrating. And uh Helmus got the pair. Check. Fifteen thousand. Uh, JC might take a card off here. He might think, well. Raised to 30,000. Wow. Oh. 
Well, this may be his first misstep here, unless he gets real lucky and hits three. I mean, Phil's been pretty relentless about limping on the button and then checking the flop no matter what. So he, he's entitled to get some action when he flops something sooner or later, right? But he's, it's still not a huge hand. Well, the only thing is if Tran really follows through here, you'd have to probably bet both streets. 35,000. Cool. Oh, the quick call. And I mean, Helmuth. Helmuth thinks he's got the best. He's trying to talk JC out of bluff in the river, isn't he? Absolutely, yeah. He doesn't want JC to do oh, it. Oh, that's no good. All in. All in. Oh, my God. Now, this would be the call of the Premier League, yeah? This would be some kind of special call if he musters it. <laughs> and, I mean, Phil Helmuth would tell you that he is the only one in the world capable of making this call. Call. No! Wow, what a great call! Wow. I got nothing. JC to had to test him, didn't he? Eight. He had to see if he wow. really, if he really was Phil Helmuth. 90. I felt you were weak. I thought he was going to move you off. Wow, worship to the god, bluffing, worship to I mean, the god. Club hit, it was a real tough call. Actually, I have 132. Over in the poker room, they've reached the heads up stages of group number two's heat number one. It's Canadian. Scott Wellenbach against the young Italian Giovanni Riso. I'm on All in. He's moved all in here on Wellenbach. Scott doesn't look like he likes it. Such a massive difference in points between first and second. All right, I call. He's called call. the 16 oh, points, call. of course. Oh, Nearly will give you a lock for the final table. 11, still a lot of work to do. And Riso not only covering Wellenbach, Ooh. but leading now That's ahead. Runner, runner now. <laughs> Wellenbach's in a real pickle here. Yeah, Deuce would get him out, and that's it. <laughs> Didn't happen, and the Italian feeling like he's nearly there. Giovanni Rizzo won his first league match for the online qualifiers here in the poker room. One step closer now to a seat in the Premier League. What does it mean to you? Well, my girlfriend always says, like, oh, yeah, you're winning money, but when's when's your chance to really break through? And I'm telling her, oh, maybe this is the time. So the fact that it's an invitational tournament already, even just a playoff to be here, it's already pretty prestigious but of course it's a dream to play the Premier League and it would be a validation for me as a player. Well well done here in your first match you and good much. luck uh, coming up. Thank you very much. Thanks. Thanks. Confirmation of the scores. Remember you're looking to get in the top two. Third and fourth will play heads up for that final and there's a feeling 19 points might do it. So a lot of work for the bottom half of group number two here. Martin Haffercorn. Whoa he's in trouble. Back on the feature table, the two Brits heads up. I Ten. think this might be good enough that Rickett's going to put his chips in. Ace Jack. <laughs> All in. And All the in. question is, what is Shikerchi willing to call with? As tight as Rickett has played here, for four big blinds, you can't really expect his range to have a whole ton of pairs in it relative to all the unpaired <laughs> hands. You're two live unders most of the time. Come on, right? Cool. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah. And uh, yeah, he couldn't come up with any reason to let it go. He's not in that bad shape, although he's going to look at the ace jack and think that is a bit on the upside of Rigget's range. Still, 34% equity. Against that exact hand, I think it's a little shy of what he needed to call, but he won't always be against a suited ace. Great shot for Riggett to double up. Six or eight says different here. And that'll lock it up. Riggett doubles. Make some live diamonds, actually. And that's one of them. Oh! oh. Flush out the back door. I did not see that one coming. <laughs> and Shikershi wow. is the winner. Well done. Well done. I thought you played really well. They did, and they both <laughs> played well, and both Talal Shikerchi uh, and Paul Riggett, Isaac. Uh, I think we'll be seeing them again. I think so. Yeah. <laughs>
Talal has won his first matchup here for the online qualifiers. Not quite there yet, but you're one step closer to being in the Premier League. What's that like? Um, well, obviously, I'm pleased that I've got enough points that I don't have to gamble uh, in the next round. So it takes the pressure off. Uh, and uh, I guess there will be some other people who do have to gamble, which changes the whole dynamic and will make it quite interesting, I guess. Look at the Group 1 standing. Shakerchi's a player, and he's more than halfway there with 16 points. Riggett and Safina looking okay, but for these bottom four, they'll need to put in the performance of their lives to keep their Premier League hopes burning. Our onliners still have one more league match to go, so join us next time when we find out who takes one step closer to becoming a Premier League star.